Hello guys, this is The Gaming Revolution here and welcome back to an all new Call of Duty video. Today, I have a lot of information to discuss regarding Call of Duty Vanguard, Warzone and even Call of Duty 2023, Treyarch's next title. Yes, that is right, there's been a lot of leaks recently and I cannot believe we're talking about a game that's not even going to be out for another couple years or so. I will just be referring to it as Black Ops 6 in the title, obviously it's very unlikely that the game is going to be called Black Ops 6. I would assume it's probably still going to be a Black Ops game, but it's probably going to feature a subtitle similar to Black Ops Cold War, where it'll be called Black Ops and then something. Although, as you guys know, internally, Black Ops Cold War was still being referred to as Black Ops 5. There were even some placeholder Black Ops 5 icons that accidentally showed up in the message of the day quite some time ago, so that just shows you exactly what is going on there. But before before I get into all of the duty information, I have a quick message to share for you. This video has been kindly sponsored by Sizzle for streamers that you can check out via the link in this video's description. Streamers, have you ever wished for the ability to auto-generate stream highlight videos instead of spending ages siphoning through hours of footage? Well, thanks to Sizzle's amazing platform, you can now do so. It allows you to download automatically generated action-packed highlights from Twitch and and now YouTube streams too. Right now it is still in beta and works for games such as Warzone, Valorant, League of Legends, Fortnite, PUBG, Apex Legends and even Greener Free Fire. Like I said earlier, it used to just be for Twitch but now it is also for YouTube too. Using Sizzle is actually very simple. All you have to do is create an account on sizzle.gg and link your Twitch or YouTube accounts. You want to make sure you click refresh on your stream dashboard to detect your latest live streams. Then, select any one of your past streams with just a couple of clicks to turn it into a sizzle that will be available for you to download within 12 hours. You can then upload it onto YouTube, TikTok or any other platform to help grow your audience without a lot of extra work. This feature is something that streamers have long since needed and will aid people with keeping up with live streams and YouTube video highlights to help grow your audience. Don't forget sizzle is still in open beta but any sizzle made during the open beta period will be completely free and if this sounds interesting to you you can check out sizzle using the link in this video's description so where all of this information is coming from is tom henderson also known as a long sensation obviously he's provided very accurate leaks in the past although like with all leaks we need to take this with a grain of salt everything is subject to change and or misinterpretation i will leave a link to his video down in this video's description where he discusses all of this information if you want to check it out after you are done watching this video. But to summarise the information, Magua on Twitter has provided a nice summary. So first of all, in terms of the Call of Duty Vanguard information, apparently the game is probably going to have 8 maps for multiplayer on release. I'm guessing this is referring to 6v6 maps, and yeah, I mean this seems likely. It does seem like because Call of Duty has moved to a games as a service model, with free DLC maps, it doesn't really make sense to launch the game with a bunch of maps when they can just drip feed it after release, which makes a lot more sense and also gives them more time. There's less panic and stress for release, and yes, this will make a lot of people sad, but I believe Black Ops Cold War also released with eight maps, but then Nuketown released just a couple weeks after release, so we might end up seeing something similar to that, where we see, you know, some extra maps added very close to release. But yeah, obviously, Call of Duty's main focus moving forward is is Warzone. Most of Activision's developers have moved over to be assisting with Warzone and yeah it does seem like unfortunately 6v6 multiplayer is going to be taking the back front since Warzone is that main pillar that has the majority of Call of Duty players right now and is making Activision a ton of money with the battle passes and bundles. He did go on to say that there's apparently a variant of Ground War returning similar to the 64 player variant from Modern Warfare. Once again I could see this being the case Honestly, since so many fans have been asking for 6v6 content, you know, do we need these larger player count modes? Don't get me wrong, I think Ground War was actually one of the most solid things in Modern Warfare, and I also really enjoy Fireteam in Black Ops Cold War, so I would like to see larger player count modes still be in Call of Duty. It's just that because they are also working on these other modes like Gunfight and Ground War, it means that there's not as much focus on 6v6 multiplayer, and it does seem like there is a large portion of the fan base that only 
only really cares about 6v6 multiplayer, and you know, they just won't even touch gunfight or larger player count modes. So although overall there might actually be more content in the game, for those 6v6 fans it seems like there is less content, because objectively, both Modern Warfare and also Black Ops Cold War released with more content because they did have those larger maps, you know, in terms of area and size, obviously that makes up a lot more content, but because less people play them, it's kind of just splitting up the player base. And it's making it seem like there's a lot less content there because they're just spreading the content out across multiple modes instead of just focusing on 6v6. The next thing that I want to mention is regarding zombies. So as you guys know, Vanguard is apparently going to have a zombies mode, and according to the Chinese leaker Victor on Twitter, it's apparently going to be set in the Dark Ether universe and is going to be connected to Black Ops Cold War zombie storyline somehow, which makes sense because obviously on this next Mawada Totem Berlin map, the Nazis are going to be escaping from the Dark Ether, so it does make sense for it to tie in with Vanguard since it's going to be set in World War 2, but the recently there's been a lot of rumours and speculation that Treyarch are going to be assisting Sledgehammer Games with the zombies mode in this game, and to this point we don't really know exactly how much Treyarch are helping out, but according to Tom Henderson, Treyarch aren't really helping out that much, they're just kind of overseeing the project and giving Sledgehammer Games tips regarding plot points and some easter egg related stuff. Obviously if the storyline is going to be set in the same universe, Treyarch will have to assist them somehow just to make sure canonically everything ties in and makes sense, but maybe Treyarch aren't really actually developing the mode as such, they're just overseeing it and just making sure things are okay and making sure the storyline is okay and stuff like that. Maybe they're more so assisting with the storyline as opposed to the actual gameplay, but as I said earlier, according to the Chinese League of Victor, it's going to have the same perks and stuff like that from Cold War Zombies and if it is set in the same universe, that would make sense, so maybe they're going to have the same skill tiers even, we're just going to have to wait and see, but this game is going to be on Modern Warfare's engine, so the movement's going to be quite different to Cold War, so it's going to be interesting to see how that plays in Zombies, since Modern Warfare didn't have a Zombies mode, we could obviously play Zombies in a war zone, but it wasn't really the same thing. But yeah, I could totally see this being the case where Treyarch are kind of just overseeing it, making sure the storyline and stuff is okay, but they're not really full on developing it, because when this news came out, a lot of people were worried that this might be taking Treyarch's development time away from Cold War Zombies and obviously their next Call of Duty release in 2023. Well, if they're just overseeing it, this shouldn't really take away any development time. The next thing is, is he still believes that there is apparently going to be some sort of standalone Zombies game coming at some point in the future. I don't know when, and it's probably going to be free to play. This has been a rumour that's been floating for quite some time. I don't think it's really going to come anytime soon if this is a thing. Maybe it's just in talks right now and it's not actually being developed, but maybe it could be something we see further down the line. Obviously, with Warzone being free to play, I'm sure Activision want to delve into the free to play aspect a lot more with Call of Duty. Maybe there could even be some sort of zombies mode added into Warzone that's free to play. The next thing he mentions is regarding Treyarch's next Call of Duty release in 2023. So, obviously, this year in 2021, we're seeing World War II Vanguard developed by Sledgehammer Games. In 2022, we're going to be seeing the Modern Warfare sequel developed by Infinity Ward. So then we're going to be seeing another Treyarch game in 2023. And right now we don't know the title or anything like that. As I was saying at the beginning of this video, I'm just going to be calling it Black Ops 6 because it's probably still going to be a Black Ops game, but it's probably just going to have a similar title to Black Ops Cold War where it's got a subtitle. But according to him, it's going to be a very similar game to Black Ops 2 where it's only slightly futuristic, but it's still a boots on the ground game. And I really do think that Black Ops 2 is the perfect atmosphere for Call of Duty to go right now. It really is. The unfortunate thing is though, is that every time a Call of Duty developer starts planning for their next game, obviously it doesn't release for two to three years down the line. So for example, when World War 2 released by Sledgehammer, everyone was hyped to be back to World War 2 and back to boots on the ground. So when they started work on their next World War 2 game, they didn't realize by the time the next World War 2 game would swing around that the community would no longer like World War 2 Call of Duties. So it's just weird how these trends occur. The same kind of thing happened with Advanced Movement when Advanced Warfare released. Obviously, at the time when Sledgehammer Games started the initial development on Advanced Warfare, the community was begging for change for Call of Duty. They were saying every single Call of Duty game is the same every single year, so obviously they tried to mix it up by having Advanced Movement. The problem with the Call of Duty cycle is they pump out a game every single year, and it doesn't really give them enough time to predict what the community is going to want by the time the game swings around, because, you know, I know a slightly futuristic game like Black Ops 2 
wouldn't have worked a few years ago because we had back to back to back futuristic games. But honestly, there's no issue with a Black Ops 2 styled game. Black Ops 2 is most people's favorite Call of Duty game. And also if it doesn't have advanced movement, it still boots on the ground. I think it really is the perfect setting. And after all, Black Ops Cold War kind of still has the same vibe to Black Ops 2 where it's very bright colors and you know, atmosphere wise and aesthetically wise, it's very similar to Black Ops 2. So I really think that this kind of aesthetic that Treyarch have been going for is perfect for a slightly futuristic Call of Duty game. In terms of when it's going to be set, well, obviously we've had Black Ops Cold War kind of bridge the gap a little bit between Black Ops 1 and Black Ops 2. So maybe the game's going to be set in between Black Ops Cold War and Black Ops 2, slightly before Black Ops 2, to sort of fill more of the gap and explain more as to what Mason and also Sergeant Frank Woods were up to. And they could have flashback missions and the regular jazz and stuff like that. And of course, now that all of the Call of Duty games universe and timeline has connected and integrated together, if we are going to be seeing the Modern Warfare sequel a year prior, well obviously that's going to be taking place very close to 2025 when Black Ops 2 is set. So, the storyline's going to be very much intertwined with Black Ops 2. So if we're going to be seeing Modern Warfare 2 in 2022, it would make sense to then see, you know, a slightly futuristic game, maybe set slightly before Black Ops 2, or maybe even slightly after Black Ops 2, that time-wise is set very close to the Modern Warfare sequel. Since everything is going to be tying together now, and that way they can obviously have Modern Warfare characters in this next Treyarch game, whatever it ends up being called. And speaking of this next Treyarch game, it was already confirmed by Kevin Drew over on Twitter that yes, Zombies is going to be in the next Call of Duty game, developed by Treyarch. This was obvious anyways, but I just wanted to throw that out there. You know, recently the new Battlefield obviously got revealed, and that's going to be set in 2042, which is a very similar time setting to Black Ops 2, you know, only 20 or so years extra. So it's a very similar vibe to Black Ops 2, and I really do think that this is the perfect place for Call of Duty to go in the future. It just does suck that we're going to have to wait a couple extra years to see this game, and by that time, the community might be wanting something different, and that's just the problem with the Call of Duty cycle. But everyone is very excited for this new Battlefield game, and hopefully if everyone likes it, they will still be excited for the next Treyarch title as well, set in a similar time setting. The thing is, obviously, oversaturation is a thing, and let's just say, over the next couple years, with this new Battlefield game, and maybe there's going to be some other first-person shooter games set around the same time setting, it might cause the community to get bored, just like they did with Advanced Movement, just like they did with Boots on the Ground back in the day. Honestly, I would hate to be a Call of Duty developer working in the state that they do, because community opinions are just constantly shifting so drastically, it's so hard to predict what game to make when it doesn't release for another few years, and the community flip-flops literally every single year about what they want next. The next thing I want to mention is that he apparently said that the new Warzone Pacific Theatre World War II map that's going to be coming on release with Call of Duty Vanguard in November was apparently only something that was recently changed, although according to VGC sources, they kind of contradicted that because they said that this has been planned for a while, and Sledgehammer Games are very much prepared for this release, so that the Warzone integration with Vanguard is not going to be as poor as Black Ops Cold War because Sledgehammer Games have had more time to prepare, so there's not going to be any weird balancing issues when all of the guns and stuff like that transfer over. But yeah, we're going to apparently be seeing the new map on release with Call of Duty Vanguard as opposed to months later, and the integration is going to be happening on release as well. Maybe not directly on release, but very soon, close after release. The next thing is that tanks are apparently going to be only used as LTMs in Warzone because they're apparently very broken. Obviously, that does seem likely. The next thing is that the new Warzone map apparently plays like Fireteam. Obviously, according to VGC sources, it's apparently a lot bigger than Verdansk. So they might increase the player size to maybe even 250 players if the game can handle that. There's apparently going to be semi-destructible environments in Warzone similar to Rainbow Six Siege where you'll be able to destroy small buildings. Not really on the same scale as Battlefield where you'll be able to destroy entire skyscrapers, but you'll be able to put holes in walls and stuff like that to peak. Very similar to Rainbow Six Siege. And this is the same information that the Chinese leaker Victor also has been saying and hinting at over on Twitter as well. So that's not really any new information. And recently, all of the points of interest have been leaked for the new Warzone map. And on screen, you can see them all. I've already made a whole video going over this. He said that these POIs are somewhat outdated and apparently the docks points of interest has been replaced by Battleship. But yeah, I'm sure a lot of those points of interest are just sort of placeholders right now anyways. The next thing he said is that 
the Vanguard multiplayer doesn't sound unique because Sledgehammer Games has tried many cut ideas. So Vanguard is basically a traditional World War II title and is probably going to play similarly to Call of Duty World War II. But honestly, that doesn't even really matter because, you know, World War II, yes, did release in a poor state. But after the overhaul, a lot of people really enjoy World War II's multiplayer. Those people who did play after the overhaul. So I don't think that's even a bad thing, to be honest. The problem is most of the people who played World War II stopped playing after a couple months of release. So they never got to play after the overhaul. And I think that's why there's a lot of bad taste in people's mouths for another World War II game developed by Sledgehammer because of the fact that they only played World War II on release. And yes, it was awful on release, but it did get a lot better later on. And now that they've hired a load of new employees and stuff like that, the studio is a lot more refurbished. So we'll just have to wait and see what they end up releasing. The reveal is apparently going to be sometime near the end of season four inside of Warzone as a live event where we'll see the trailer and stuff like that at the end. It's apparently involving armored trains and stuff like that. So I'm excited for the reveal. We're not too far away now. And for those people worried about this game, I would say just hold out until we actually get the reveal and see actual gameplay to start hating because right now there is literally like no official information on the game apart from leaks. And just a quick reminder, this video has been kindly sponsored by Sizzle for streamers. If you want to check them out, there will be a link down in this video's description. Anyways, thanks for watching the video and make sure to subscribe if you're not here for the latest and greatest Call of Duty news and information. So anyways, thank you for watching and uh, bye.